you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Desi Perkins. <laughs> no, seriously, do I, do I look like Desi? I follow so many beautiful, amazing, talented makeup artists and influencers, and I always love just seeing all the types of content they create and looks that they create. And when Desi posted this picture, I died. She looks absolutely stunning as she does all the time and I saw this and I was just like I have to recreate this. She's just so beautiful, so talented and so humble and someone that I look up to. Makeup by Ariel was the master behind this look. His looks are just so... You're amazing. So I thought that this would be fun to do and I had fun doing it. So if you guys would like to see how I got this Desi, complete Desi Perkins look, then keep on watching. I already prepped my skin. You guys have seen me prep my skin multiple times. So I just went and did it beforehand, but I did use the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. This stuff is so awesome. It just, I don't know, it makes your skin feel just so supple and hydrated, which is what I personally need since I'm more a drier normal skin type. And then on top of it, because you guys know I love to glow, I use the MAC Strobe Cream, and this is in the color Gold Light. So just lightly applied both of them, and you can see like my skin already has just like that really Perfect glow, ready to go. I always switch back and forth between doing my skin first or doing my eyes first. So today I wanna to do my skin first. And I'm gonna be using two different foundations as always, guys. So the first one is the Hourglass Vanish. I've been using it a lot. This is one of my newer favorite foundations that I've been playing with. I'm obsessed with it. This is in the color Light Beige. And then I mix it with the Too Faced Born This Way. This foundation you guys know is a staple in my collection. I just can't live without it. This color is also in light beige, and I'm just going to apply a little bit on my mixing pan, mix them together, and apply them evenly on the skin. I think my favorite thing about using these foundations together is that I just use the tiniest amount, and it gives me the most fullest coverage I've ever had in my entire life. But it's a breathable full coverage, which is also why I love it. Like This full coverage is basically new skin full coverage. A lot of full coverages to me can get drying or cakey, whereas this literally doesn't look like you're wearing anything. For concealer, we're gonna be using a few different shades because I really wanna emphasize the brightness under the eyes, which is something that is very subtle but still stands out in a lot of his makeup looks. So the first concealer I'm gonna be using is always my Born This Way concealer. This is also in the color light beige. And we're just going to go ahead and use this as a base um, I like to put it there, a little bit right here. I have some blemishes that decided to pop out a couple days ago, so I'm gonna use that to cover there, and can't forget the chin. Grabbing my ColourPop No Filter Concealer, this is in the shade Light 18. It's a little bit brighter than the shade that we put down. We're just gonna put it here, here, and normally I like to go in with another brighter concealer, but because I want this look to be even brighter, I'm just gonna focus on laying down these shades first and then putting that color on. So now I have this like really nice soft base so when I put on this brighter shade it's gonna be easier to blend into. So this is also the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. This is in the shade Light 16 though. So we're gonna go ahead and apply this right here, right here. I'm gonna bring it down maybe just slightly. Slightly as I like start going just kind of everywhere. I feel like he does that though. He kind of like does all a little bit of like that. <laughs> I'm also gonna put just a little here, here, and there. Now I'll just like lightly blend this in. That really made us bright up under there, which is exactly what I wanted, so this is perfect. Because when we lay the powder down, it's gonna help to soften it up just a tad bit as well. So now for powder, I am going to cream contour, but I just want to put some powder there to set it before it starts to crease. And I know he likes to bake a little bit too, so that'll be perfect timing for it to bake. So the, we're gonna be using two powders. The first powder is the RCMA No Color Translucent Powder. What we're gonna do is just lightly grab some, mix it in the hand so that it's not a lot of powder, and do the first set. What this does is just helps to kind of dry up that whole area before we set down any of that baking powder. Now doing that, it really helps the second powder to sit on nice and evenly. The second powder we're gonna be using is the Kat Von D Translucent. I'm just gonna go ahead and dip right into there with my Beauty Blender. 
and lightly press that powder where we need it to bake. I have allergies, so I like to bake a lot in this area to help that makeup just stay put. I feel like baking always makes us look so crazy, but it's okay. So now we're going to contour with a cream contour. This is the Makeup Forever palette. This is in the shade 30. I'm going to be taking my cover, not my cover, my color pop. I was going to say cover effects. I don't know why cover effects was on my mind. This is the Color Pop F2 brush. Um, typically this is a little bit bigger than the average cream contour brush you would use, but I like to make this work. So I'm just going to dip in there and then pounce that product on. I like doing it this way better. It really ensures that I'm getting the right amount of product where I need it to be. On to the nose. So taking my Hakuhodo Sephora brush, we're going to contour the nose, dipping just a little bit of that product. And we're going to sweep that anywhere that we didn't have that powder laying before. I don't usually go like too crazy on the nose. I just give it a little little something something you know now I'm gonna take my beauty blender and just blend in that nose contour for sculpting and highlighting we're gonna be going in with our Charlotte Tilbury film star bronze and glow this is my favorite ever love this thing we're gonna be taking the Morphe 510 brush dipping into that highlight I like to highlight first lately. Sometimes I'll like bronze first and blush first and then I'll put highlight. But as of like the last two months, I've been digging doing highlights first. I don't know. I feel different. <laughs> like it's better almost. But I always switch up. So who knows? I might change my mind in another month. Once I have that highlight basically everywhere because I love to glow. I know that makeup looks a little bit different. They're definitely more on the matte side. So it might get a little bit softer as the layers go on, but that's going to be the only difference. I just really like to glow. So now we're going to be dipping into that sculpting shade right here, taking my Japanesque highlighting brush. This brush is amazing. You guys already know. I'm getting so many DMs and comments of you guys saying that you have bought it and that you love it. And I'm so glad. I love when you guys tell me everything that you purchase because I'm not... I'm not here to tell you to buy things. I'm here just to tell you things that are going to make your life easier. I'm always going to tell you guys about things that I personally love and, you know, just hopefully in return that you guys love them too. Obviously not everything is meant for everybody, but I'm so glad a lot of the things that I do suggest to you guys that you guys love. It makes me happy. Now I want a little bit more bronze, so I'm going to be going in with the Anastasia Bronzer in Mahogany, just doing it ever so softly because... Yeah, we already know about this deal. You guys know every time I talk about this how it's not meant for me, but you know, we make it work. So we're just going to pop a little bit right in this area just to give that illusion. Ooh, I'm going to be bronzy. For blush, she looks like she's wearing like a really nice peachy shade, and I love peachy shades. So before we put the blush on, we're going to dust this powder off. I'm just going to be taking my Sonia Kashuk blush brush and dusting all of that right off. So for blush, I'm gonna be dipping into the Anastasia Trio. Um, these palettes are to die for. I love every single one of these. I have almost every single one of them. This one's in Peachy Love, and I think I want to use either this one, which is Ginger, or this one, which is Miami, and I think I might just like end up mixing them together. So I'm going to be taking this e.l.f. Flawless Face Powder Brush, dip into both of them, and then pop it on top. Oh yeah, I feel like that's the color she was wearing, or pretty close to it. And I'm just going to be focusing more in the frontal area, right here, right on those apples. Then I just want to take a little bit of Miami, right on my Japanesque brush, just dusting it off so there's nothing on there. And I want to pop this just right on top, right here. Really emphasize that color right on the cheeks. Ooh, so pretty. You guys, I'm telling you, these blush palettes are everything. So now you see how that highlight definitely softened up, which is what I told you guys was gonna happen. 
but I want a little bit more highlight. So I'm going to go back into this with my um, Morphe 510 brush. Just lightly go over it. I don't know. I love this area to glow. All right, let's set the face before we move on to eyes and brows. Makeup Forever Mist and Fix, as always, guys. In love. My fan as well. By the way, you guys, did you see Patrick Ta coming out with his entire makeup line? And he came out with a fan. I died. I bought the fan. You guys know I'm all about fans. And when I saw that, I was like... Yes! Before we jump into the eyes, I do need my brows done. I'm gonna do those first, but I'm gonna do them off camera. You guys have seen me do it so many times before, so I will be right back. For eyes, she has a really nice, just simple matte eye. So for today's eyeshadow palette, I'm so excited to show you guys. This is the newest palette to my collection. It's not new to the market, just new in my makeup collection. It's the Viseart Grande Pro O. Let me show you this. First of all, this packaging is dope. You pull this to open it, and it looks like this. Look how, let me, let me lift this back for you guys. Look how amazingly beautiful all these shades look. This palette basically has like everything that you can possibly need for a matte shade. I, I've never, experienced a better matte palette in my life. A lot of times matte eyeshadows can end up being chalky, muddy, just dry. Every single one of these shades from a touch of your finger is extreme amount of pigment and, and so I can't so amazing. It is expensive though, I'm not gonna lie. It retails for $150, but if you're into matte shadows, this is probably gonna be the only palette you'll ever need for the rest of your life. So I mean like $150 for the rest of your life, it evens out. Luckily I was able to get my hands on this a little bit cheaper. I am a licensed pro and I was just at the American Beauty Show here in Chicago. So I got to purchase it for $120. So a nice discount, still extremely expensive, but so worth it. So jumping into the palette, we're gonna be using this shade right here. I'm just gonna take a large shader brush. Actually, I'm gonna be mixing these two. Yeah, I'll be taking a large shader brush um, just to really kind of brighten up the eye and lay down a nice base for all of the shades that we're gonna put on top. Grabbing my Smith 232 brush, I'm gonna be dipping into this shade right here. I think that's a good shade to put right here in the crease. They have a nice neutral look going on, so I'm gonna be mixing some cools, warms, and neutral tones to give me a neutral look. Really focusing it right here in that crease. We want to keep the lids bright, so just focus it all the way up into here. And then as always, blending out to the temple. That's a preference, you don't have to, but I personally like that fade of shadow into the temple. Grabbing a slightly smaller brush, this is the Smith 230 brush, and we're going to dip into this shade, yeah, this guy right here, just very, very lightly because these are so pigmented, and I'm gonna focus this right into that crease. Now we're creating a really nice shadow right in that bone. What I'm also gonna do is take it right up under that brow as well. This is gonna be a layering process as well. So I'm gonna be going back and forth with those two shades. So I'm gonna go back in with that Smith 232 brush and then dipping into that first like little softer, warmer shade that we applied first and then applying that right back on top of that. Doing that type of technique will ensure that those two colors marry well together and that you just get that really seamless blend. Now I have those colors perfect to where I want them. I'm gonna go back in with this shade right here. This is with my MAC 239 brush. I'm gonna just dip in there and we're going to brighten up now right in that eye socket. It'll also help just to clean up any eyeshadow 
that got on the lid. Then it looks like she just has maybe like um, a pencil liner or a liquid liner just straight down on the top. I don't think she has a wing. Let me double check. No wing. So before I put the liner down, I do like to smudge a little shadow down. That's just my preference. So I'm going to be going in with, you know what, let's go in with a mixture. Let's go in with these two. So this we used in the crease. I'm going to mix a little bit of that one as well. So we can put right, right here. Stamp that ever so softly right along the lash line. She has a slightly thicker liner, so this would be perfect. I don't know if I mentioned my brush that I'm using. Um, it's the Morphe E36. I might have. It's been a long day. I'm tired. You guys know I use this brush all the time. It's my absolute favorite brush for stuff like this, so that is what I'm using. So now I'm going to grab my Fenty liner. I've been using it a lot lately. I really like it a lot. And we're just going to go ahead and line the eyes. So because this Fenty liner does have like a slight sheen to it, I'm just going to go back in with that darker brown shadow with my Morphe E36 brush and just kind of pounce right on top of it just to dull down that shine. For the under eyes, they don't really have a lot going on either. So I'm going to be taking my Makeup Forever. This is the 216 Wavy Brush. I think it's 216. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> and just dip into these shades right here. And just very lightly buff that under here. Because I don't want too much going on since it is softer. Last step before completing the eyes lashes, so I will be right back with those. For lashes, as always, you guys know I use the Ardell Individual Lashes, but today I did something that I've never done before, which is why I also wanted to do them off camera. But again, this trick isn't anything new, but I've just never done it before. So I took these Ardell um, Faux Mink Wispies, which is just like their original Wispies, but these look more like your mink lashes but they're foam ink and I don't like strip lashes I never have they just irritate my eyes that's why I do individuals all the time so I basically cut up that entire strip and applied them like individual lashes and I'm in love I'm gonna have to do that more often my lashes always look more on the softer to natural side so now I feel like I can get that bolder look without it being in a strip lash so Again, I know this ain't anything new, but I'm glad I tried it because I'm digging it. For lips, she's got a nice nude matte lip on. So what I'm going to do is pair two products together. We'll see um, if I like the color or not and might have to like doctor it up. But I'm going to be using two. So the first one is the LA Girl Lip Liner in the color Cafe. You guys know how much I rave about the LA Girl Lip Liners. They are so amazing. And then I'm going to be using the Dose of Colors. Desi X Katie collection in the color No Shade. Now this look would not be complete without the outfit and luckily I have all the pieces to put it together. So let's put it on. And this completes the look. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and let me know in the comments below if you guys like seeing videos like this. I had another video that I did um, maybe like a month or two ago on Kylie Jenner when makeup by Ariel to Kylie's makeup I like died because it's one of my favorite looks ever. And then when Desi posted this look I died because I thought she looked so so beautiful. I really like recreating people's looks because it helps just to spark some more creativity, jump outside the box, use different products, do different techniques, and just create something different. And even though I don't look like Desi Perkins, it's just fun just to get inspired by people who inspire you. Well, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. As always, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to all my videos if you guys like to see more. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me there. I am Amanda Devon as well. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.